Yeah, I have it all now. We can, um, if you can hear me, please uh, feel free to write in the comment section. Just say, I can hear, I can hear as we get ready for today's live session. All right, who and who is there? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can see Mr. Undubusi Charles Adeson, yeah. Yeah, Phil Michael, Idowu, Mubarak, and all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I should um, get into the video. All right, so today is the, is the first day of our School of Poetry, and I'm so happy, and we are even celebrating here with this bottle of wine. I'm so happy that you guys are joining. Yeah, we are launching the School of Poetry, and I believe this is going to be a, a really good one for a lot of people out there. Wow, wow. So cheers to you guys. Yeah, cheers, cheers. Mm. So we are beginning our school of poetry and it's, you know, it's something that we wanted to start um, for about three months or so. I've been talking about it and I'm glad it's all coming to a, to a reality now. It's, it's all playing out and um, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. So, uh, okay. Thank you so much. This person says, I'm so happy to be part of the school. I'm watching from Mercy City, Worry. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. We can see comments from all of you. I can see you. Thank you for joining. Okay. So, we, this is the school of poetry, you know. There's so many things that in poetry we talk about, and uh, most farmers don't know why they even do certain things. And this is one of the things that prompt, prompted me to want to start this school. You know, you're talking to farmers and you mention some things. They don't even know the, the, the science behind it. And it's important that you know the reason why you are doing certain things. It is when you know the reason that you... Let me get this wine out of the way. It's when you know the reason that you can actually... Uh, do it properly and also pass on the knowledge to maybe your workers because you know the reason. You can explain to them when they ask questions. Okay, but sir, we don't have this. Why don't we? Then you explain to them that this is the reason. So that's one of the things uh, that prompted me to start the poetry, the school of poetry. And I believe this is going to be remarkable for uh, most of us. It's going to transform the way we do our uh, poetry. Okay, thank you for joining from Ghana. All right. So uh, we're talking about why the school of poetry now? Why, why, why? Why the school of poetry? So I believe it should be able to um, help you understand certain principles that are behind some decisions that we take. As poetry farm, okay, for example, they'll tell you, Okay, you, you can vaccinate your birds on day six. That's for Lasota, maybe. Or some will say day seven. Some would say, this place is so hot. Don't mind me, I'm sweating. So some will say day seven, some will say day 10. Yeah, it's important as a farmer that you understand because sometimes fears will make you just go and rush to vaccinate your birds, even why, or even when you ought not to. Maybe the birds come down with a certain disease and you are just scared because people have, uh, people have told you, your vet have told you, you must vaccinate between this so, so, and so, so, so. And because of that, you just rush and it brings more calamity. And that is so, so bad. You don't want that to happen. Wow. Thank you all. We are, we are up to 42 watching now. I hope we get to 100 today. All right. So I want to start dishing out those things, those basics, those scientific knowledge that will help you understand why you do certain things so that 
you can do them right and also you are able to teach or pass the knowledge to your farm workers because it is important you can't always be on farm by yourself as uh, sometimes along the line you have to leave somebody to do certain things and you need to explain to them okay do this and in explaining to them you'll be like a fool if you can't tell them okay this is why i'm saying you should do this now, there's one thing in this age you don't just pass instructions to people there are people that will ask you okay sir but why why maybe you're having an interactive section with your with your workers and they're asking you but well, sir why do we do this then you you say ah that's how they say we should be doing it no 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 so thank god for platforms like this and i believe that by god's grace we'll be able to push it that uh, we'll be able to push this that um so many farmers who are joining will be able to uh, understand the basic principles the basic principles and the reasons for doing a lot of things all right all right thank you mr this song yeah definitely a very okay I, I believe happy to be part of the school worship from lagos nigeria thank you so much thank you for joining thank you all for for joining all right so today is the is the first day like i promised Earlier in March, I said, uh, since I got the camera that I wanted to be using for this school and I got the uh, computer to use, so I said it shouldn't go beyond March. And I had some, you know, um, family stuff to take care of. So that was why we couldn't start earlier in March. But I believe we are fully set now. We are set, we are ready. All right, so we are having this session in March. Uh, because I promised it, and subsequently it's going to be on Fridays, preferably in the evening, because most people says, okay, most people have said when I uh, I sent a poll on the community session of the channel, most people chose um, 9 p.m. on Fridays, and I think that is good. I'm just going to make sure that we have the lighting in, post, in place so that you can see your, your teacher. All right, so that's it's okay, Farai Isa, watching from okay from Lagos. Thank you, Chess, Chess, Chess. Thank you, thank you so much, Chess. All right, I can see you all. Wow, this guy is also a YouTuber, agribusiness insider, and is really doing great stuff. All right, thank you so much for joining too. Thank you for joining. I'm proud of you all. We are 49 now. Hopefully, before the end of this session, uh, we should be up to 100 because I would want us to reach the 100 um, mark. All right. So, but today, are we just going to talk about this introduction and just end it there? No, 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 no. I cannot just leave you guys without dishing out something to you. But then, for today, I'll just say, for those people that reach out, you know, sometimes you have challenges and you reach out, you you want solution. Like I said, um, your animal scientist, your number one animal scientist, and your um, poultry success partner. As much as I want to help, you need to help me to help you. So for example, maybe you are having a problem on the farm and you want solution, you reach out to DIY Agri and you just send a message and okay, you send a message on WhatsApp, you say, uh, my, my best are dying, please help, please help, please help. You have not really said anything. And in the midst of several messages, that kind of message is not the one you want to attend to. So we should learn how to get attention. Yeah, let's learn how to get attention. As farmers, definitely you have crisis on one once in a while, and you want to reach out to people to get um, a solution. So I'll advise you, whenever you're reaching out, try as much as possible to send pictures or short video. Let the video cover the, preferably the whole of the farm, the whole of the pen, where that situation, where that problem is happening. So that the person who's going to advise you, sometimes you, you might be sending to a group, or to me personally, so that whoever is going to address the issue will be able to pick from all what is happening. You know, we are not wizards, and sometimes it's just it's just the litter. Sometimes it's just the way your watering system is arranged. Sometimes it's just little things that 
you are not even uh, paying attention to that is causing the problem on your farm. So it's important that you help the person on the other side to understand your problem. It's not the same everywhere. For example, if birds are just dying early in the morning on your farm, it doesn't mean it's the same on the next farm. The next farm, the reason why they are dying on your own farm may be because uh, maybe you just vaccinated them and the vaccine, you had a vaccine failure and they are dying. On the other farm, it might be eat, eat stress. On the, on, on the other farm, it might be cold. It might be that the brooder is not hot enough. The person doesn't know the temperature that they're supposed to use. So all these things matter. And if you don't provide sufficient information, sometimes it's hard to answer. Maybe you have 50 messages. I have 50 messages to answer to. And you want me to start engaging you and start asking questions. Okay, let me see your picture. Let me see this. It's not all the time you, that you get that kind of attention. So let's try as much as possible to detail from the get-go. As you pick up your phone to send message to DIY Agri, try as much as possible to send detailed messages. Describe the situation you are facing as much as you can, as well as you can. If you do that, then you have made my work easier. I'll just go through the chat and say, okay, 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 what could, what could be happening here? And I'll just say, okay, yeah, do this. Yeah, do this. So that's that, that's that for, uh, for now. All right, thank you so much, those of you that are still joining. We are 57 now. I want us to hit 100. I want us to hit 100 before we, the end of this um, live session. Okay. I'm seeing you all. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to have you here. It's so good. All right. Shalao Misore. Yeah. Poultry Farm Guy. Thank you for joining. All right. We're 60. So if you are enjoying the uh, session, you know, it's the first we're having. And is the I think it's the first I'm having. It's the first live session I'm having. The other one I had is just on the training platform is on a training um, and I didn't really enjoy it. So if you think you're enjoying it, please like the uh, stream and also let me hear in the comment section. Let me know in the comment that you are enjoying it. There's one other thing I'm going to say before we end this and it's going to be really good for those who are practicing organic poultry farming. All right. Sorry, some of you or you all may not be able to participate with me, but just join me. Cheers. All right, so let me know if you are enjoying the session. I have one tip, one wonderful tip to share with you guys after now. Today's session is going to be short, and subsequently, I will probably okay, maybe I'll take I'll take a few questions before we end, but not now. Just let me know if you are enjoying it, and I have a tip to share. After that tip, I'll take a few questions and we'll end it. We may not be spending more than 30 minutes today. All right. So thank you all for those who are still joining. So let me know. I just salivated that drink. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Don't worry. I'm sending yours your way. Thank you. All right. So uh, somebody is asking a question, but... I don't even understand the question, and it's not time for question and answer. Uh, this is you're my role model. Thank you so much. I see this opportunity as a stepping stone for me. Yeah, I believe it's going to help every one of us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I put off my phone. I don't know why my WhatsApp messages are still coming in. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. You are all enjoying it. Okay, then we have. Um, okay, I have. I think I have a. This person is a paid. This person is a paid member. Okay, okay. All right, to so you paid members, actually, I've been busy doing a lot of things um, behind the scene, and I'm gonna. I'm promising you that I'm gonna be doing some exclusive. I'm going to be pushing out some exclusive benefits to you guys. So it's not as if I, I forgot you. There are some things you should be enjoying that maybe not the whole house are enjoying. So I see you all that are there. And um, don't worry, I'm going to be pushing those things your way very soon. Those uh, exclusive benefits will be coming your way soon. 
Okay, I can see that most of us are saying that we are enjoying. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so for those who reach out to me, there's this common problem with um, broilers now. Okay, I'll, I'll be starting with broilers. There's this common problem with broilers. Okay, okay, we could take your time. We ain't rushing. Okay, don't worry. We'll take our time. All right, so there's this common problem with broilers once they are once they are reaching that, or when, once they are passing that four weeks age, there's this common problem because maybe because of the way that we load them with feeds or because of poor biosecurity. <sighs> Actually, in, in Africa, generally, it's hard, to, it's hard to be uptight in terms of biosecurity. There's, there's just going to be this gap most of the times we have this gap. You are just not doing it enough. It's not because you don't want to do it, but you have so much to do. And I think the resources are mostly limited. Farmers, the investment capital that we put in are not usually that much. Most farmers are small scale farmers and they can't even put in um, those structures that will help them prevent some things from happening. For example, people walking into your farm, you know, you having a gate house where a security man will stop uh, people from entering if they are not invited, you know, where you have your birds far away from the access area. All those things is not all of us that can have it. So we have so much gap. Maybe it's because of those biosecurity issues. And maybe it's because, of, it's because of the ways that we feed our broilers, that we load them with so much feed. And, you know, it's just like they, they, we, are, we are using, we are maximizing their, their, their potential. And at the same time, we are putting so much pressure on their organs. For example, the liver, the kidney, everything in them, all their organs, we are putting pressure on it. So we, we are trying to maximize the output, you know. That's what concerns the farmer. All that you're thinking of is the highest profit you can ever get. And you're just doing all that you can do. You are doing your best to, to get your the best result possible. You see DIY is coming online and it's telling you, okay, you need to feed this. You need to use coconut water when you just get your birds. You know, you need to do this. All these things you are, maxim you are trying to maximize output. Forgetting that these birds also... You are using them. You are using them. I think that's the word. You are using them. Yeah, you want to get your results, but you are using them. So this common problem, you know, before long, you see greenish pool after four weeks, sometimes after five weeks. But I don't think it's that common with broilers at the race for, for three months that eat gradually. You, know, you don't rush them that much. But would I now say that you should not raise your birds for five weeks, six weeks, because that's what we are hitting? No, I wouldn't say that. But you need to know what to do when you see such problems. You know, somebody even called me recently. I was crying. I was like, all oh, my birds are dying. They are even, I think, as they were already maybe eight weeks or so. So they were big and, you know, losing birds, you know, the cost of one broiler bird, the mature one, maybe like 5,000 minimum. So losing three a day, that's crazy. You're losing 15,000 Naira a day. If you lose two, that's 30,000 Naira. I mean, if you lose six, that's two days, I mean. That's 30,000 Naira. It's enough to pay salary for some people. So all those things, you need to know what to do to solve those problems. And one of the things that I found so effective, when I say so effective, I mean, I have not... It's not only me that I've tried it. I've given it to several persons who call. And after a while, they'll say, wow, wow, it has really subsided. Thank you so much. And this secret is something that we all know. We have been seeing it. Some of us even have it behind our, in our backyard. Some of us have it. Some of us, maybe you have it, use it for other things. We, we use it for... for um, our hair and all those things and it is aloe vera aloe vera gel as you're seeing it is very very effective in taking care of 
viral diseases. Yeah, viral diseases. It takes care. It takes care of viral diseases that, after a couple of days, you see the impact. You see the impact in your birds. So um, maybe I'm going to be showing you step by step how to use this in a subsequent video. Maybe not a live session. Maybe in or uh, one of my uh, videos on YouTube. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to use this. If you try it, you will see that your birds will be fine. And there are other things you can also put in your feed and in your water from start to finish of your rearing that your birds will just be fine. It will be fine for the most part. It will be fine. Even if they have issues, you just have one or two things to put together and they will be fine again. They will recover. All right. So I really appreciate you. Ah, see my mommy here. Thank you so much for joining, Ma. Uh, I really appreciate you all for joining, and um, even though it's the first, it's the first of uh, its kind, we are going to be having so much. We are going to be having so much, you know. Subsequently, I'll have my topic for for the day. Probably you even have access to the topic before the day, so I'll schedule the post. You know, you'll be notified by YouTube. Yeah, one important thing: if you are not, if you have not done it, if you are subscribed to the channel and you are yet to hit that notification bell, the way you eat it after you hit the notification bell, you go to the side, you see where the bell says all, or uh, I think the second one says um, something like videos that are. Uh, related to maybe the one you just watched or all you select that all so that all my uploads you will see them as they come you see them as they come because if you miss some live sessions you may not have access to them after that live session i may not put it back on youtube so it may just be for those who join the live stream all right so that's how it's going to be subsequently i will announce this is what we are going to do and we'll address the situation Okay, so quickly, questions, 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 questions. For those, okay, Idou Mubarak, okay, you want to subscribe to the channel? Yeah, I mean, I believe you want to, you wanted to say you want to join, you want to be a paid member. Yeah, it, you just click the join button. There's a join button on the on the page. Just click the join button. There you see three tiers. I think the one, one is maybe 450 Naira. The second one should be one five. The third one should be maybe 10,000 or four five. I can't even remember. All right. So you just join whichever uh, category you want to join. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More Grace DIY Agri. Yeah, I received that. Okay. So questions. I need some questions to come in. Maybe we'll be wrapping it up uh, by, okay, maybe... In 30 minutes, that's seven minutes time. Wow. Somebody saying you can't hear. Is that right? Is that the same for everyone? Is there anybody that is still hearing? If you can still hear me, please let me know. Is it still clear? If you can still hear me, just say, I can hear over here. Okay, you can hear. All right, thank you. What's the best drug for brooding? Okay, so you might, you might want to check your phone. You said you can't hear clearly. Please check your phone. It might be your phone. Others are hearing. Okay, so I'm going to pick this question. Okay, I think we have... I have a couple of questions already. Wow. Okay. All right. So what's the best drug for brooding? Mm, I like this question so much. I like it so much. And I'm going to address it in a way that will help everyone. Okay. When we talk about drug, one of my professors in school then would say, Whenever you use a drug for your chicken, it's more like you're covering for your sin. You're covering up for your sin. And I so much like the way you put it. Because if everything is perfect, if everything were to be perfect, not only on your side, though, at the, from the archery 
from the parent stock, everything. If the parent stock were clean, no disease in them, no disease passed into the eggs, which now comes with the chicken. Like I always talk about mycoplasma that causes CRD, which is a major problem of broilers. That is how, mostly that is how it happens. It comes from the hatchery into the egg and into the cheeks. And inside the cheeks, it's just waiting for a favorable time. Maybe when the birds are stressed, like humans, you know, sometimes when you sweep and you inhale dust, you have flu, you have kata. So it's not acid, it's just that dust that causes the kata. It's more like it's, it, it stimulates uh, the kata to come. It's like an allergy, yeah. So the same with mycoplasma that comes from the hatchery. But my focus is if everything were to be perfect from the parent stock, the hatchery, then coming to your farm, then your biosecurity on your farm, you may not even use drugs at all throughout your brooding, or maybe just once or twice. But now we need to use drugs as much as possible. Sometimes some people even use antibiotics. This last session is not basically organic poultry. It's both organic and the conventional way. So when I talk about drugs, you know, I'm talking about synthetic drugs. And when I want to talk about organic poultry, I will mention it. I'll be specific. I'll say organic poultry. Excuse me. So whenever you use drugs, it's like you're covering up for your sins. But in brooding, what I would advise is we have levels of antibiotics. We have strengths of antibiotics and we have different types. You know, we have... Um, you may, you may be using um, penicillin as an antibiotic. You may be using uh, ciprofloxacin as an antibiotic. You may be using, um, what do they call it, gentamicin as an antibiotic. No, all those. And we have broad spectrum. We have the ones that at attack certain things. That is why the knowledge of a vet is important. Those who know what these antibiotics actually attack and how effective it can be. So back to the question, you don't, you don't start using strong or the strongest antibiotics when you are brooding. That's very important. You don't start using the strongest antibiotics that you can lay your hands on just because you know this person say, ah, it's so powerful. Once you use this, it's going to work. Of course, it's going to work if you use it when you are brooding. And sometimes it can even kill your best if you are not careful with the dosage. So it's going to work. But then one thing most people don't know is that antibiotics is more like a problem to poultry or even humans generally. Because the bacteria in your birds, if you use these antibiotics this time, they have known it. They have identified it. They may be trying to build resistance over time. So before long, the kind of bacteria that is causing that particular disease and you're using the strongest antibiotics you can find to kill, after a while, that strongest antibiotics will not be able to handle them. Now, if you, if you go from strongest, where are you going again? That means you are coming down. You have used your best. You have thrown your best shots. So I don't advise that you use the strongest antibiotics for brooding because you're just starting. The best are still gentle. They are still fragile. And, you know, as much as possible, you try to keep your brooding area clean, as clean as possible. So you believe that any jams that will enter that place should not be a, a Goliath kind of jams. So you should also try to handle it step by step. If you are going to use antibiotics at all, try to go step by step. Start from the, the least, not necessarily the least, but not the best or not the strongest that you can lay your hands on. For me, even though there are, there are articles there are studies that claim that um, aerofloxacin has some issues with, I think, lameness. Yeah, there are some studies that claim that it can cause lameness in your broilers. But I tell you, I don't really think I've experienced personally lameness in broilers as a result of, anti uh, of that antibiotic aerofloxacin. Generally, I encourage people to use aerofloxacin. It's okay if you're using, uh, if you're raising your birds the conventional way, you can use aerofloxacin. It's good to start with. And sometimes you need to also consult your vet. There are some arteries that, because of certain things that are going on there, maybe in the in the last six months, maybe people have noticed that 
no, some people take their cheeks to the lab to test. So maybe people have noticed that there's this particular organism that comes with these particular birds. That is why sometimes vets will say, ah, ammo birds, these are the, this is the antibiotics for them. This is the right antibiotics for them. They will say, uh, Olam birds, this is the right antibiotics for them. That is the knowledge behind it. They have studied the farm, the hatchery. They have seen that things that come from there have this particular bacteria, have this particular fungi, whatever. And because of that history, they are able to recommend that you should use so, 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 and so uh, antibiotics. And once you use it, it takes care of it. They may just choose a specific antibiotics that is not necessarily broad spectrum that will just undo that, part, uh, that particular bacteria. So you also have to put your head, is it head now? Put your hair on the ground, if it is a leg. So put your hair on, on the ground to know what's going on uh, in the hatchery that you have, you have chosen to take your birds from. Okay, we have 85 people and we want to hit 100 before the end of the live session. We want to hit 100, uh, let them come in. I believe we are going to get more, more, more to come. Okay, can I quickly see another question? I believe I've, if I've answered that question, please, can you please say, yeah, 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 yeah. If you think you are satisfied, please say yes. All right. All right, if you need to get parents talk, you can just reach me. You can reach me. If you need to get parents talk, just reach me, reach me on WhatsApp. I'm going to type the phone number now, the WhatsApp phone number. Two three four seven zero six four nine five three seven three eight. Okay. All right. So that's the number to call or to WhatsApp. WhatsApp. I I I I really prefer WhatsApp. I really prefer WhatsApp. One of the advantages of WhatsApp is that you know I don't have to stop whatever I'm doing just because I want to answer you. Sometimes you are doing some things that are very important. Sometimes I'm recording a video and you're calling. I can't stop the video to answer your call. So you can just send WhatsApp a, a detailed message. And once I read it, I will answer you. I will answer you. Then if I don't answer your WhatsApp, place a call. Make sure that I pick sometime. Once I pick, then tell me, okay, I, I sent a message to you, blah, 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 blah. You know? So I prefer WhatsApp. Thank you. If you want to get um, breeder, just reach out to me. Your question, your question. What's the question again? So many questions here, sorry. Is it advisable to combine antibiotics and multivitamin when breeding? Yeah, preferably all things being equal, if your birds are okay, not emaciated. I will explain why what, what the meaning of emaciated is in birds at least. If your birds are okay, it's better to just serve the antibiotics first and follow it up with uh, multivitamins. But if they are hemorrhated, maybe they are they are not even eating. They are they are they, are, they have lost weight and all those things. You may want to help them with the um, multivitamin. There, the reason is that there are some antibiotics even in humans. There are some antibiotics that you don't use multivitamins or blood tonic in humans now. You don't use blood tonic when you're using some antibiotics. They will advise you, your um, pharmacist will tell you, don't use antibiotics, uh, don't use multivitamins, don't use blood tonic while you're using this drug. So the same for birds. There are some, it's not all, there are some. So because you will not know all of them, you will not know the one that, you, that will permit you to take multivitamin. That's why they, we advise generally, you don't use multivitamin when you're using antibiotics. But if the birds, you know, the health and the life of the bird is what matters the most. If the bird is dying, it doesn't have strength to even hit, it doesn't have any, you need multivitamin to. So it may just lower the level at which that antibiotics will work. But at least you still need your birds to survive. So if the birds are okay, you just, they just came down with the disease, but bodily, they are still okay. They can pull through three days of antibiotics to be followed up by multivitamins, then you should just use the um, antibiotics first and follow up with multivitamins. Okay, so if I've done, if I've addressed, it's like, it's like I'm just answering Mr. Udubusi. Okay, let me quickly go, go back to some other question. I bought new coconut. 
leg got like dislocated due to okay. Mm. Okay, I didn't really get that, but if your birds have dislocated or dislocation on their legs, just separate them. Don't let that, don't subject that kind of chicken to struggle with other birds. Separate that chicken or chick, depending on the age, separate the chicken and give attention to it. Allow it to heat separately, take water. Most of the time, some of them will come back uh, on their feet. I've had my drama that a dog beat the leg. The leg was like almost out of the other part. The, the shank was almost out of the body. Then I put it back together. I tied it. I kept it in a box, in a carton box for about, say, one week plus before I then... Ah, is it one week plus? Two weeks plus. Yeah, for so long, for two weeks plus. It was after then that I now allowed it to come up. Right now, you won't know that that kind of thing has happened to the Noila uh, to the Brahma before. So it happens, it happens. Just give the kind of care that you would give, depending on the kind of dislocation or the kind of injury on the leg. Uh, okay, sometimes with, with broilers, it, it can be overweight. So you give calcium supplement and all those things. Okay, what? Okay, what's the cause and treatment for wet vent? Wet vent can be caused by, by a couple of things. It can be diarrhea, it can be salmonella. So it depends on what causes it. So if it is salmonella, most of this is just antibiotics you give. Even if you give mild antibiotics, it takes care of it most of the time. Uh, if you give mild antibiotics and it's not going, you, you can give a stronger antibiotics. So that is why a lot of people trust antibiotics so much because most of those things is bacteria that causes it. And once you use antibiotics, it takes care of it. Uh, for those who use organic, we do organic poultry. One of the things you can do when you have issue of um, diarrhea is to engage the work of Scent leaf or basil, scent leaf or basil. Yorubas call it a fairy. If you use that, it works, works like magic. Okay, we have 88, it was 90 back to 88. So let's hope we can get to 100 before we head. Let me see if we have other questions to address. Thank you so much for standing by. Okay. Okay, what's this saying? Janet, can you get the same broiler weight gain result under organic? Ah, when you ferment your feed as with when you feed dry feed. Okay, okay. I'm actually coming. Um, something is cooking. I have something to post later, later on, that will show you why you will always get better results with organic. I think this person is specific about fermentation. I'm also going to teach you very soon the perfect way to ferment your chicken feed that you're not going to lose any nutrients. You are just going to be gaining more nutrients because the most important thing about fermentation that most people don't know is that you don't want to lose nutrients along the line. If you are losing nutrients and you say you're fermenting your chicken feed, it's not good. You are getting the benefit of adding lactobacillus to the birds. It will hit the, the, the whatever nutrient you give to the bird will be digested and assimilated well. But what of the ones that you lost? Maybe you lost it in the water or so. So I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how to ferment your feed without losing any nutrient at all. I'm going to be showing you that very shortly. It's one of the things that I'm uh, I'm already planning, but because I've been so busy in the past couple of weeks, well, I think I should be free from now. I should be free from now. So you will get better results if you ferment your feed very well. If you ferment it well, or if you ferment it the way I will teach you very soon, you will get extraordinary results. You will not get the same broiler weight. You will get better. You get higher weight. All right. So can Newcastle be okay? Please, if I've, at, if I've addressed your question, please be kind to just say, oh, thank you. 
I got it. Something like that. And please try to try to also like this stream. Please let's try to like the stream if you want um things like this to keep coming to you. Please like the stream. All right. I mean, just click on the like button. So this person says, can Newcastle be treated? If yes, is it safe to return to treated to return the treated bird back in the flock? How long will it take to treat Newcastle in a bird? <clears throat> okay. You can actually you can actually manage Newcastle professionally or scientifically. You don't say you treat these viral diseases, you manage it because the body in itself is able to wrestle and sometimes win, sometimes lose in the battle. So what you now do when Newcastle comes, all those things that we do is actually trying to help the bird to be able to fight better. So for example, if you are treating, most of the time you give uh, doxygen. Yeah, you give doxygen, which is doxycycline and gentamicin for birds that have uh, Newcastle. Those, those components are actually antibiotics and it is not the antibiotic that is treating Newcastle. But like I always say in my trainings, Newcastle is a viral disease, but it will attack the bird's immune system. It will make sure that the, in, the bird cannot fight for itself against diseases. So in that state, bacteria in the environment will just rush at the bird and try to kill the bird because even the hair with breeding is not pure. If you, that is why you have, if you have bread, on the table in your house and you leave it for several days, it begins to grow mold. If you have food, food substance that is not kept in the fridge or freezer, it will start to decay. Why, why doesn't it decay in the fridge or freezer? Because the fridge or freezer is not conducive for bacteria to, uh, to grow. Sometimes you see that in the fridge, especially in Nigeria where light is not uh, constant, in the fridge, mold can still grow if there's no light. But in the freezer, as long as the freezer is working, mold will never thrive. So wherever, whenever the environment is not conducive for bacteria, then it can grow. So what we do is while we are trying to help the bed to survive by giving maybe multivitamin to boost the immunity, we are also giving antibiotic to kill any bacteria. We call those bacteria opportunity, uh, opportunistic bacteria. They see the opportunity that, okay, yeah, a virus has taken hold of this bird and is weak. Let's quickly go and fight it, and they want to kill it. So such opportunities, uh, opportunistic bacteria are destroyed. So most times it takes, the length of day is not the same. Sometimes it takes three days and the bird has recovered. Uh, sometimes it takes five days. Sometimes it can even take two weeks for the bird to recover. You will know when the bird recovers. So that is why it's it's good that you know the difference between a healthy chicken and a chicken that is not healthy. Now, you need to make sure that the chicken recovers fully well. The chicken is healthy and fine before you think of moving it back uh, to the flock. Once the chicken has recovered, the chance of, of transmission to the rest of the flock is very, very slim. It's very, very slim. So, for example, if it is a layer bird you can return it back to the flock but you don't take such bird to a flock that it does not belong before for example you're not journey to fresh birds no you can return it to its own flock and whenever you are treating maybe you remove one chicken from a flock because it has newcastle if you are treating it you also make sure that you treat the rest of the flock because some of them might be incubating the newcastle in their system Incubating means the disease is already forming, but it hasn't started showing the sign. Maybe it's just there. Some diseases take three days before they manifest. Some takes uh, as much as two weeks before you even see any sign that this bird is sick. So because of that, because there are some of the uh, chickens in the flock that may be incubating, you try to treat all of them alongside the one that you have already seen that this one is certainly sick. So that's it. You can actually return birds to the flock, but make sure that you also treat the rest of the flock. That's it. Okay. So if I've addressed that question, please uh, just let me know. Can fermented feed work for layer? 
if you are raising your layers as um free range, you can use fermented feed free range and make sure that they are already accustomed to it. Not that when they have started laying, you now start serving them fermented feed. Don't try, take this as a rule of thumb. Don't try to surprise your layers. Layers are not like wives. They are not like your children. They are not like your parents that you want to go home and surprise them. Layers don't like surprises. Just be giving them whatever you are giving them that is making them give you eggs. Continue giving them. Don't ever think of surprising them. Don't surprise them. So don't serve fermented feed to layers. If they are already laying and you have not been giving them before, don't bother to serve it to them. They are very sensitive. And if you have been giving, if inside their feed you have been pouring, let's say this is salt. Maybe you are making lots of feed and this is the level of salt that you had to their feed. If tomorrow you reduce it to this level, just a little, they will know and the production will drop. If you also increase it like this beyond normal, they will know and your production will suffer. So they are very sensitive and you don't want to play with them. Just be giving them whatever you have been giving them that is making them give you eggs. All right. So for layers, don't surprise them. I don't really encourage fermented feed if they are not um, raised as um, free range. Yeah, free range. Okay. <laughs> Can shellless eggs be prevented right from brooding on nylar birds? Shellless eggs? No, no, not really. You just want to make sure that they don't have new calcium. That's all you can do before laying. That's all you can do before laying. Just make sure that you, you don't allow them to have new calcium. New calcium disease can cause shellless eggs. And then Nutritionally, you make sure that they have enough calcium in their feet. That's all. The main thing, those are the things that cause. <laughs> yeah, I see this person says, no surprise. Yeah, my brother, no surprise. So the main cause of shellless eggs, the two, there are two, mainly Newcastle disease and um, calcium deficiency. Okay. That is why the, the layer feed is usually higher in calcium than the grower. Okay. Do you save 50% from your fermented feed? Don't worry, I'm going to be addressing that in the coming video. All right, all right. We might be ending the live stream shortly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Am I missing any question that I should answer? Okay, let's quickly address this. How long can a wood shaving stay in the chicken house before changing them? Wood shavings, how long will it stay before you change them? <laughs> There's no answer. <laughs> okay, this is why I said there's no answer. It's not the same. Sometimes it can, it can stay for just two days and you need to change it. Sometimes it can stay for six months before you need to change it. So there are a couple of things that are affected. One, the weather condition. If the weather is humid, that is maybe rainy season and the atmosphere, there's so much moisture in the atmosphere, that means moisture will not only set to on the litter, but also the, the moisture from the, excuse me, from the feces. You know, when the chicken pass out the fecal matter, you also see water joining it, the urate. So that also will not evaporate fast because already the atmosphere is kind of saturated. So in humid weather, the rate at which the water or the moisture evaporates is reduced. That means that litter will not be drying, will not be drying quickly. But in hot weather and where everywhere is just um, dry, you see that the litter will be getting dried very quickly. 
And in that case, you don't need to change. You don't really need to change your, your liter. So that's one, the atmospheric uh, weather condition. Another thing, another thing is your management. If your workers or you yourself, you are, you are just pouring water on the floor every time, you need to change it um, often. Um, that's why I encourage that you use automatic drinkers if you can afford it. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, the depth of your liter. If you if you put your wood shavings, and it's not deep, it's not up to like five cent, five inches, four, four, five, six inches. Yeah, anything from four, five, six inches is the appropriate um, depth. But sometimes this is a butt to it. Sometimes when the weather is already humid and the things are not even really drying, it's really with broilers that they poop a lot at the third, fourth week and upwards. If the weather is not really dry and you notice that even after raking and turning the litter, it's not really drying, don't bother to do five inches, my friend. Just do some reasonable depth that you will change after a while. Because in the end, you will see that the litter will still kick if the weather is so humid and the population of your brother is much. So the population is another thing. If the population is much, then it's going to be filled up quickly. So those are the things that affect it. There's no straight answer to that. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Anthony. You say this is good. Thank you. Thank you so much. What is the cure for CRD? I think I have videos that address that. I have some videos that address of CRD, CRD, you can use things that have tylosine in them. Yeah, tylosine basically addresses um, CRD. So there are drugs that have tylosine, gentilo, tylodox. So they address it. And in the organic part, I have a video that talks about the organic um, remedy for CRD. You can just check it in the... Um, in my video, in my YouTube channel, just go to the YouTube channel and type, by the time you type either chronic respiratory disease or CRD, you see the videos I address it. All right, so I'm going to have to ask you, should we end it here? Because we are just enjoying ourselves. All right, what would be the best treatment during CRD? Yeah, similar to the last question. So just go to the YouTube channel, just I believe everyone here should know how to get to my homepage on the on the YouTube. So just just go there and check the search bar. Put CRD. I have videos that address CRD, whether organic, whether the conventional synthetic way. All right. So thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you so much, Albert. Okay. Yeah. If you have birds that have uh, torticollis, the turned neck. That, that is a sign of CR, uh, Newcastle disease. Torticollis is a sign of Newcastle disease where, where it, it, it is it is the velogenic strain of Newcastle. Don't mind the grammar. It's just big. It's nothing. It just, it, there are three strains of Newcastle disease. There's one that affects just uh, the respiratory. There's one that is mostly concerned with the digestive system and the third one is concerned with the uh, circulatory um with the nervous system rather the nervous system so that is the one that we call the velogenic so it affects the brain so the chicken's head will turn the chicken may not be able to stay upright and maybe you know wagging or shaking the head so that is Newcastle. So you may want to just help the bird as much as you can. If it is so severe, what you can do is, is minimal. There's not much you can do. If it is so serious, there's not much you can do. It's not that some birds don't recover. Some recover after a while. But you just want to separate that bird. I encourage that you separate it from the rest of the flock before you even try to treat Ah, uh, Tagiri, I have, I have Tagiri. Okay, don't worry. Maybe on the in the community post, I will try to some of the questions that I'm seeing here. 
in the community post, I may be trying to put some things that will help you address some of them. I know that we will definitely have so many questions, more than we can address here. Otherwise, we'll be spending hours to address them. Okay. But I believe that for all that I've answered, I believe you all are okay with them. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, don't worry. I can see question on fermented feed again. I'm going to be doing that video very soon, very soon. I just need to get some extra buckets so that I can show you everything step by step. All right. All right, so thank you all for watching. And if you're even watching this um, live session after the actual live stream, thank you all for joining. Please don't forget to hit that like button and um, hit the notification bell. Click on all notifications so that you constantly get my um, notifications when i post new videos or i'm about to host another live session then you get notified again it's going to be a friday friday thing any day or any friday i'm not going to be able to host it and i will notify you earlier if you're going to do it in the morning in the afternoon or a day before or a day after i'll let you know but by default it's friday eight between eight or nine p.m we'll be starting either eight or nine i'll let you know ahead of the time so but put your mind on now on friday fridays every friday every friday of the week we'll be having our live session so before we go if you think that this live stream this live session should continue just write it there say this must continue just say this must continue all right so if you want us to continue this not now. I mean, subsequently, Fridays, every Friday. If you want this to continue, and if you want me to just end it now and say, okay, there's nothing like School of Poetry again. Yeah, feel free to say it. If the rest of the group will not come after you. Okay. But if you want us to continue, just say, yeah, I just say, this must continue. I'm expecting that to come in. Yeah, this must continue. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm expecting... The majority will, meet, will win the vote. Oh. If we have more people saying that we should not do it again, then we will not do it again. All right. Okay, I will, I will answer this question before we go. Thank you all for saying it must continue. I will answer this question before we go. I will answer it before we go. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I would say most of us want it to continue. And one more thing before I answer that question okay we may be making this one hour one more thing before i answer that question for those who think diy hagrid is only talking about broilers i'm not just an expert of broiler farming no 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 there's a motive behind it there's a motive behind it i just wanted to make sure that i address so many problems I may not be able to address everything in broiler, but I want to address so many problems in broiler farming before I move on to layer. I don't want to scatter it all across uh, the platform. I can talk extensively on layers. I've raised thousands of layers before, so I can talk extensively on layer. And I'm even going to be doing a demonstration on my demonstration farm on layers. I'm going to be showing you guys very soon so I, it might be it should be the next project i'll be showing on youtube so i'm going to be doing layers from day old to the point they start to lay and let's see the maximum eggs that we can get from that flock so i can deal with layers i can deal with other livestock but you no know, let's take it step after step step one step at a time all right so we have everybody saying this must continue. Knowledge is power. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I appreciate you for joining this session. I thank you for joining the session. Don't forget the WhatsApp 
number beneath on the screen there is what you should um, reach out to if you need anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Don't worry. I'll talk about other livestock later on. Sheep, cattle, we'll get there. But my style is to first populate broilers. I'm almost done populating broilers. We'll keep doing videos on broilers. But now you can see, some of you can see that I've started moving to engage people on layers. So we'll do more on layers. They will move to other, excuse me, other livestock from there. All right. So thank you so much for joining. This is where we'll be heading the live session. If you are yet, I want to beg you, I want to plead with you, make sure that you don't leave this live session without hitting that like button. Please and please make sure you don't leave the live session without hitting the like button. All right. So thank you very much. And we'll be seeing again next Friday. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's going to be the Friday after tomorrow. All right. So thank you all for joining and God bless you. Once again, this is DIY Agric, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. Bye.